In today's photo deconstruction, I'm going to take you behind the scenes with a fashion shoot using my signature color red. Hey everybody, Lindsay Adler here, and my favorite color by far is red. It is powerful, it's commanding, it's luscious, it's passionate, and I use it all the time. In fact, years ago, I actually did a year-long project where I explored the color red in many different facets, from fashion shoots to on location to portraits and more. And so I was really excited that the color of the year for 2023 is Viva Magenta. Now, even though the color is magenta, if you actually look at it, it's mostly a red with just a little bit of a shift of the hue towards magenta. And so this year, I'm going to be shooting a heck of a lot of red. All right, so what I wanted to do is today take you behind the scenes of a fashion shoot that I did in my studio using the color red, but in doing so, I planned a set and little adjustments to create an image with depth and drama and motion, and it's, I love it. This is exactly the type of image I dream of creating. All right, so let me begin by taking you behind the scenes of the lighting, and then I'll show you what was achieved in camera versus post-processing. And by the way, getting really luxurious reds, sure, you can get them in camera, but a lot of the time that richness is something done in post-processing and color grading. First and foremost, let's talk a little bit about my set. I didn't want the subject just to be flat up against a red background or standing in front of it. Often standing in front of a background can feel a little flat, lacking depth. And so what I decided to do is build a corner. I took two red backgrounds. Now these backgrounds are gravity backdrops red and they're a medium to heavy texture and they're supported so that one on top of each other is actually making a V. That way I could place the subject back against the seam and would look as though she were in a corner. And you can see that if we go back to the final image, see how her toe is just barely touching that edge, but the way that those lines converge on her gives the illusion of depth. So I love that effect, and this is something that I try to do when I, I want the image to have a little bit more of a dynamic feeling. All right, so let's Pop back over here. So we have the gravity backdrops red background. And by the way, if you would like to get a hold of this rich red background, definitely check out the links in the description below because I have the resources and links for you there. All right, so next up, let's go for our main light. Our main light is a Westcott optical spot. You guys know that this is my favorite modifier, not only because I designed it, but also it gives me a ton of control. What I wanted to do is create a pocket of light on the center of her face and torso that just had a little more contrast, a little bit more pop and then flat light the rest of the scene. And so use the optical spot centered on her to illuminate her. And then you can see over here, a large umbrella with diffusion. This is a soft light source that would lift up the shadows. So the idea is to have mostly flat light and then just a little more contrast on her face and body. Now, before we take a look at what was captured in camera, I wanna talk a little bit about the gear. For this setup, I use my go-to camera lens combo that I use over and over again in the studio, which is the Canon R5 and the 24 to 105. And the 24 to 105 is really important for this particular scene because I shot a series of images of this subject, but I did some that were full length, some that were three quarter, others that were close up on the face and I never had to change the lens. All I had to do is change the zoom, change the focal length with a single lens. So I love that flexibility and versatility that it gives me. All right, so we have two lights here, right? Optical spot, large umbrella with diffusion fill. We have the gravity backdrops corner. Let's take a look at what was captured in camera. So the final result here, but let's see the original. Okay, so the original looks quite a bit different. So there's a couple of reasons. Reason number one is I was shooting at a little bit too warm of a white balance, unfortunately. I wasn't paying attention and I was still on shade from another shot. And so everything is looking kind of yellow and it really was washing out the richness of the red. So I did need to change the white balance. That's one reason it looks different. Also because of that, the skin was looking really yellow as well. And, and it was just too saturated. Because I wanted this image to be monochromatic, it means all the color that I want in the image is to pretty much be a variation on red the red floor, the red dress, the red background, even red lips. And so I need to mostly eliminate the color of the skin if I truly want it to be monochromatic. So I knew that that was a change that would need to be made. And then furthermore, the left and right hand side of the background don't look the same. The right hand side is a little darker. Uh, it doesn't have quite as much texture. So these are all things that I want to remedy. And then there's one more thing that you'll notice. Uh, my assistant was throwing the dress and you can just barely see his leg in the right hand corner of the scene. So I know that I need to Photoshop that away as well. So these are the things I analyzed. This is what I was able to achieve only in raw processing. So what that means is contrast, cl 
clarity, shifting the hue a little bit, uh, playing around with a little bit of color in the highlights or shadows, I could do that. So this is what I achieved just in processing before I ever made it over into Photoshop, which is obviously much closer. So you can see I lightened up the skin, I desaturated it, I added more contrast on the left, and I lightened up the right. So this is getting us much closer to where I want it to be. All right, so let me show you the final retouch, and then we'll actually go over into Capture One so you can see what I processed. So this is the raw file, the color grade, and then the retouch. So what I ended up doing is I extended the background a bit, I exaggerated the texture, and then I mirrored it over so that the background on the left and right were similar, so that it would create a little bit more symmetry to the shot. I also, as you can see, you know, smoothed out a few details, like lowered her shoulders just a little bit, uh, and evened out the lightness. Uh, in the original shot, her arms were catching a little bit more of the optical spot, and therefore they were looking a little bit blown out. So I darkened down the arms while I lightened up the face. So once again, original shot here, color grade, retouch. Let's take a look at Capture One so you can see how I made some of these changes. So this is where the image ended up, but I wanted to show you the most important things to changing this. So first of all, I had to add the contrast. Adding contrast made a huge difference. It made the reds richer. A lot of times when you see a desaturated or washed out red, it means that the image is too bright or too flat. When I add the contrast and darken down the image, that's a lot of times when the red starts to look really rich. If the red is too light, it starts to look kind of flat or a little bit too orange. Similarly, if I pop down to the color editor, I can go into each individual color. So I could pick the yellow of the skin or the red of the background, and I can shift a couple of things. I can shift the hue, I can adjust the saturation and the lightness. And so if I zero out the reds here, you can see that they're looking a little bit perhaps too light and they're not looking as interesting, they're maybe a little too saturated, but I made little tweaks to even out the color of the background and the, the dress itself. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is pop over to the oranges, and I could tell that her skin originally was quite a bit of orange and yellow, so you'll notice here I've made a pretty big change. I've desaturated the oranges a lot, and I've lightened it up, so if I actually flatten this out, I go back to zero, once I added the contrast to her, the overall shot, her skin got really orange. So adjusting the oranges here made a huge difference in that porcelain look. So quite a lot was achieved with the color editor. Yes, I added contrast. Yes, I added a vignette, but this port, a part of the process really affected the color grade. So you can see how I went from the original image and was able to transform it in those steps. So let's go back over and look one more time original straight out of camera shot, final retouch look. So as you can see, my signature style is this beautiful, luxurious red. That red does depend on the set and the concept, the red of the lip and the dress in the background, but color grading and adjusting in post to really control and warp that color to be exactly what you want, well, that is just as important part of the process. So if you wanna check out this background or you wanna see any of the gear that I used to make this image, be sure to check out the links in the description below. And of course, if you've enjoyed this photo deconstruction and you wanna see more of those, be sure to like and subscribe. See you next time, guys.